Hey, what is up, guys? PC Geekish here, and I'm here with a remake of my very first Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Yes, a remake. Because in my first KSP tutorial, I had a few complaints of having the rocket was too small, it won't reach orbit, or I'm doing something wrong with the angling of maneuvering the rocket to its orbit. Because, you know, it's a tiny rocket, so you have to be precise with your maneuver before it reaches orbit. So, I'm here with another remake of the video. So instead of using the tiny command pod mark 1, we're going to use the giant one. The command pod mark 1-2, whatever. So I'd suggest using the big ones because th that's so far the easiest way to get into an orbit using the big rockets. Because they have more fuel to burn. And I just found out that you can also adapt using the small command pod to make with big engines. And I uh, just found out about a month ago, so that's not too new. And as well as um, going to orbit, we also have some flaws that I forgot to tell you guys with the rocket that I made in my earlier KSP orbit video. Um, weight was one of the concerns I had, and mass, because... When you're pushing through the atmosphere and weight and mass is just dragging you down, I wouldn't put too much decoration on the rocket. So itself, I just put some simple stuff like, um, let's say, uh, the parachute and the um, the nose cones for a little bit of, you know, to make it look realistic. Because I'm not sure if this really reduces drag, but I'm just putting it on anyways, considering it's the lightest nose cone for the big rockets. So. Once you're done, um, don't forget to add ASCS. This is one of the dumb mistakes that I f that I made. Like put like those tiny SASs, like the big ones, because the bigger the skinnier. And for some reason, for the small rockets, they're slightly thicker, for them, for their size, of course, but not for us. Obviously, it looks so small and tiny, but for the small rockets, it's huge. So once you're already putting SAS, you want to put an SAS underneath the decoupler where the um, capsule is underneath it just right underneath it because trust me it'll do a lot to help and don't forget to also add struts and honestly I'll be honest with you um, it's best if you guys come up with your own design and learn from its mistakes and flaws before before using my kind of designs because you know your your design might be simpler than mine never know because my design has like 20, 30 parts in it, in, a, in just one single capsule. I mean, one single rocket. So, also, don't forget about using side boosters if you want to get yourself the upper hand before launching it. In order to successfully push through space, and then you can let the main sail engines do the rest of the work. So, um... You also want to use um, main sail engines, which is a, which are the first big engines that you know most people use to launch, because it has the max power of 1,500, so that's a heck of a lot of power. And don't, I'll talk about overthrusting in the when we're launching. So let's deal with that later. Don't forget about struts. Have I said that? I don't think so. Want to add another strut to the bottom of the rocket just in case. Because sometimes the rocket, the, in most cases, the rocket do flip out um, during launch because structural integrity is what keeps the side booster with the main engine itself, with the main rocket. So once you're done, you want to save it. It's your choice. You have a mission flag. You just come out and update to point point two zero, and. Don't forget about your parachute, because it's one of the most crucial element of returning home to Kerbin. Because if you want to die, then it's not my fault. You're suicidal. So once you're done, and you're done and, you know, with stuff of making your rocket, just press launch. And remember, when you fail, don't be ashamed of it. I started failing a lot my first third launches, but eventually I learned from my mistakes. Okay, so, also, you want to um, orbit, you want to make an orbit in your comfort, so, 
the weather, I mean, like, the the time is what I'm concerned about. If you guys, you know, have poor vision or, no offense, but if you guys are not that of a good, if you guys don't have a very good eye or you just feel uncomfortable launching in the dark, feel free to press the period button to time warp yourself to the morning time and then press coma to, s to slow the time warp. Now it's an early morning. We have time. So, before launch, you'll see in the left that with the orange tabs with a lot of but stuff in it is your staging. So you have in this rock in this case we have three stages. So third stage, there are the two main rockets, two side boosters, which are highlighted in the game in the game. And you can click on it and wait for it to highlight, then you can drag it to the position of the third stage and now it's a two stage rocket. So now the main engine will run with this booster, but I do not want that. I do not want that to happen, because I want the main engine itself running after the two boosters have separated, because overthrusting can cause the problem. So there are a few cases if you like. Some people think that oh, if you the more th the more thrust you have, you know, the better. In this case, not really, because you have a big rocket, and physics in this game could be a minor problem. So, first you want to think about how the rocket's going to push through the atmosphere of Kerbin. It's going to be very difficult, because... Um, terminal velocity, let's talk about that, with the weight and mass. So, it wouldn't do well if you're going to thrust 100% on all three engines at the same time. That's going to cause structure integrity problems. And it's not going to go any faster, because it's terminal velocity. I'm not sure about that, but that's from what I learned. So, before launching, I wouldn't say directly straight up 100%. I'd say if you're a beginner, you just start 66%, which is the, the middle. And you press space, and off you go. Oh, and press T to turn on your SAS, so you wouldn't have to deal with any, some sort of major... Uh, maneuver problem, should I say? So when things are going to start to go well, you know, I'm I'm rising up to 60 meters per second and rising, and it's autopilot's doing its job, just maintaining the rocket's um degree angle. We're currently facing 90 degrees vertical, and we're gonna wait until it's about you know, let's say 10 kilometer. 10 kilometers, which is 10,000 meters in this game, and then you can start to initiate gravity turn until you reach that little 9 degree mark. I'm not sure about that, but you want to head, you want to orbit east if you're going to go to the moon or whatever, because that's where you're going to orbit clockwise, and so is the moon. It's orbiting clockwise. And if it's going smooth, you can proceed to, um, Uppy the throttle until it's eighty percent to ninety percent. And when you think when you think that things are a little bit shaky, then you know, throttle down a little bit, then throttle back up. Okay, so it's ten kilometers. I can now head east towards the um equator because I'm going for an equatorial orbit. Separate and now the rocket. Ooh, that's a little bit shaky right there, but we'll manage it. 66%. Make sure that your rocket integrity is a little bit shaky, but your best bet is pressing M and checking out how high you're... You'll make an arc, which which means that you're currently in a suborbital flight, and when you see your apogee or apoaphysis rise up to about 70,000 70, meters, then you can know, stop burning your engines and wait till you reach apoaphysis, and then you can continue burning from there, because that's one of my techniques. That's a lot. That's a technique that people use if they're going to get into orbit easily. So as you can see, you can turn on your nav ball while you're in the mini map. I mean, your um, orbital map section thingy. So our apogee is seventy thousand, seventy and a half thousand. That's good enough. That's my recommendation. Seventy. And a half thousand or seventy thousand, anything lower, you're probably gonna get, you're gonna get caught up with atmospheric drag. The sphere of influence of Kerbin's gonna pull you down. 
yada yada yada. You know, advanced science stuff. So, if you can time warp all the way to um, Apple offices, that sh that's fine as long as your rocket's engine's not burning, because otherwise, time's physics is gonna screw up your rocket. And you can also have a maneuvering node, which you can click on, and you can set up your maneuvering node, and you can calculate how much thruster you're gonna add. But in this case, you're not gonna use any calculations. Now you want to make sure that your um, nav ball, your um, HUD, your heads-up display thingy, you know, your direction that you're facing is in the equator or the prograde sector, which will always be in the equator part, you know, zero degrees. That's emphasizing. And then you will go burn 100% until your rocket has reached its full orbit. Because right now it's still going to be suborbital until you have reached orbital velocity and your trajectory also ends up being in orbit. I'm very sorry for my bad charisma. I mean, like, I can't talk while doing something at the same time. Like, especially when you're recording and I'm very worried what's going to happen. And now you could stop your burn and you should be a success. And now my game's a little bit, you know, laggy, but, you know, I don't know what's going on. Hold on real quick. Maybe it'll help. Alright, so anyways. Once you've done your orbital burn, you'll start to notice that you have a little bit of a drop down there. Because it seems that your apoaphysis is 70,000 meters. Actually, 101,000 now. And your periaphysis is somewhat 68, 69, should be 70, 68 and a half should do. It's not going to fall. So once you reach your um, orbit and you're willing to get down, you should do the opposite, which is going retro. Now, the word retro comes from um, the opposite direction of where you're heading. Which is a very simple way to know that you're going the other direction where you um, are orbiting. Which will slow your rocket down. And eventually, back down to Kerbin. So, I hope this remake really helps you guys. And uh, you guys have a very nice, very nice summer. Bye.